Hi everyone, my name is Matt and welcome to another Hobby Hour tutorial. Like a lot of us, I picked up a copy of the new Leviathan set this past weekend and I've been painting the Tyranid side. Today I want to share how I painted the Screamer Killer model. I gave the model a Zenithal style prime with spray cans, beginning with a gray primer from Ace Hardware. The color of the primer is pretty close to the Citadel Paint Dawn Stone. I sprayed the model from all angles with gray and after that dried, I sprayed it from the top and sides with Citadel Wraith Bone Spray. I'm going to be painting these Tyranids in a style, I guess you'd describe it as being on the higher end of tabletop quality. Army painting is all about trying to get the most out of each stage of painting. A zenithal spray followed by transparent layers of paint, such as Citadel Contrast, is an effective way to paint armies. I don't like using just contrast on its own, I sort of use a hybrid approach and mix a few different techniques together. We'll start off with some skeleton horde all over the main skin sections of the model. I like to apply a generous amount of paint, enough that it covers the whole area, but not so much that it pools. With the Skeleton Horde base coat dried, it's time to dry brush the model with some Bone White from Vallejo Game Color. Ushabti Bone from Citadel is pretty close if you need an alternative. I'm using a cheap craft painting brush here with very little paint on the brush. Wipe off almost all of it on a paper towel with plenty of pressure. Usually I'll wipe it off in a circular motion. Then gently drag the brush across the raised edges of the model. Don't just brush in one direction. The more angles you go, the smoother the final effect will be. Don't worry too much if it looks a little textured. We'll smooth it out later. Next up, we'll base coat all of the scales with a mix of three parts Flesh Terrors Red and one part Black Templar Contrast Paint. If you're painting a whole army, you might find it helpful to mix a whole pot of this color. Just go around the model and paint it one section at a time. Work quickly and carefully to avoid pooling, and try to be as neat as possible.
Next, we're going to do some blending with Magos Purple. I really love this color. It's very transparent and perfect for this sort of technique. First, load up the brush and paint it near the end of the arm. Then quickly rinse off the brush and wipe it on a paper towel so it's just barely damp. Then go to the edge of where we painted the purple and wipe it with the brush. Sometimes I'll go side to side, sometimes a scrubbing kind of motion. What we're doing is a technique called feathering, which is a popular way of blending acrylic paint. The paint on the edge is getting dispersed by the damp brush and becoming more transparent. And by controlling that transparency, we can make the paint appear to be blended. Work in small sections at a time, and once you're satisfied with the blend in an area, don't touch it until it dries. With the first blended layer of Magos Purple dry, let's apply another one closer to the edge to reinforce the color. Same technique as the first time, just paint it over a smaller surface area. Next we'll use some Griffhound Orange and paint it into these cracks. I'm not sure what exactly they're called. If you know, please drop a comment below. Anyway, you'll want very little paint on the brush here. Too much paint and we risk it running off the brush and flooding the model. Next, paint the tongue with Cadian Flesh Tone from Citadel, and when that's dry, give it a coat of Magos Purple. Now for the claws, I'm using another mix. This time it's about four parts Black Templar Contrast Paint and one part Incubi Darkness. Not a lot of people do it, but I'm a big fan of mixing opaque paints into contrast paints. You can get some really cool effects. The Incubi Darkness is bringing a few things to the table here. It's changing the color by making it a little more blue, it's making it a little more opaque, and it's also thickening the mix. I wanted to create a mix that would get me as close as possible to the end result with just one coat. I tried out a few different mixes until I narrowed it down to this one. It'll make more sense later when we go to highlight it. I noticed some more of these crack things on his back, so I'm just giving it a quick coat of Bone White from Vallejo Game Color. and with the bone white dry, apply a thin layer of Griffhound Orange. Now we're going back to the Vallejo Bone White. I thinned it down with water into a milk-like consistency, and I'm applying some thin layers to smooth out any spots where the dry brushing left it rough and spotty. For the most part, it's going to be on the larger surface areas.
Next up we're going to edge highlight all the claws with Thunderhawk Blue. I like rotating the model to get the right angle for highlights, and the more anchor points you can get, the better. Anchor points, or basically wherever you rest your fingers, wrists, and elbows, give you more stability as you paint. I'll frequently rest the fingers of my brush hand on the model or on my other hand. Edge highlighting is all about precision and brush control, so it's important to do everything you can to help make that happen. Next, use some Fenrisian Gray to highlight the topmost edges and corners. Same thing as before in regard to precision. Go as slow as you need to and make sure to get the highlight in the right place. Even if it takes a little longer to paint something precisely, it's still quicker than having to correct a mistake. Now I'm using some white to highlight the corners of the teeth. Usually the face is a main focal point of the model, so I generally like to put a little more effort there. If you're feeling really lucky, you can paint some tiny white reflections in the corners of the teeth too. I'm putting a quick layer of black in these smokestack looking things, since the base coat layer didn't shade it enough. Now for the most time consuming part. Hit all the edges of the scales with some thinned Evil Sun Scarlet. There will be one more highlight on top of this, so I'm making the width of these a little bit wider than I normally would.
vertical marks are going to be the easiest to make. So you might find it helpful to paint all of those lines first, like I'm doing here, and then you can rotate the model and paint the horizontal lines. Next up, we'll thin down some Fire Dragon Bright and hit all the corners and topmost edges. Keep the width of this highlight stage as thin as possible, since it's the last stage and nothing is going on top of it. Alright, so after some painstaking highlighting, it's nearly there. Just a couple more details left to do. Let's quickly do the eyes with some Dorn Yellow. Just like earlier in regard to the anchor points, you want to be as steady as possible when doing eyes. Drag and twist the brush on your palette to form the brush into a fine point, and you want as little paint on it as possible. Rotate the model as needed to help the brush get exactly where it needs to go. Then add a couple pupils with black. The last stage is to highlight the skin with some Vallejo Game Color Off-White. I'm getting some of the more prominent edges, and mostly concentrated towards the top portion of the model.
Now we're going to highlight the purple areas of the skin, but we'll stick with off-white. The cool thing about thinning down a paint is you make it more transparent, and when paint is transparent, the color beneath it shows through. I've thinned it down into a milk-like consistency, and there's barely any paint on the brush. Notice how it almost looks pink because the underlayers are showing through. Once that's dry, I can make another pass and add a spot highlight in some of the corners. All right, well now the model has been based and is finished. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please click the like button. And don't forget to subscribe. I have a lot of new content in the works. Thanks again, and until next time, happy painting.